Hi, this video will show you the configuration steps for Omnibus Object Server Failover. But the P request is or netcode Omnibus 7.3.1 and Linux 5.4. These products are already installed and fully functional individually. The failover configuration consists of a primary and a backup object server that are connected by a bidirectional object server gateway in the aggregation layer with no collection and display layers are connected. Update the communication information for all the server components in your deployment by manually editing the connection data file that is omni.dat file which is used to create the interface file. A suggested good practice is to add all the components in the entire deployment to a single omnidat file which can be then distributed to all the computers in the deployment. You can then generate the interface file from each computer by running the NCO iGen command. Installing the primary aggregation object server. If the object server is already installed and running, you can apply the SQL customization to the object server by using the aggregation SQL file provider. Installing Diwali Netcode Omnibus and ensure that all the components are selected for installation. Ensure that the etz omni.dat or sql.ini file is configured with all the component details. The aggregation pair of object server is connected by a bidirectional object server gateway to keep the object server synchronized and the bidirectional object server gateway runs on the backup host. Props connect directly to the virtual aggregation pad to facilitate failover and failback if primary aggregation object server computer becomes unavailable. In primary aggregation object server, properties file and default database table, data, user, groups and roles are created for the object server. The SQL customization is also applied. Now we are going to start the primary object server. The primary object server is initialized entering into run state. Installing the backup aggregation object server. If the object server is already installed and running, you can apply the SQL customization to the object server by using the aggregation SQL file provided. Installing Netcool Omnibus and ensure that all components are selected for installation. Also ensure omni.dat file or sql.any file is configured with all the component details. Generate the interface file with the command ncvo igen and to initialize the backup object server include the SQL import file to be applied to this object server ncvo db init hyphen server IP, the custom config file with aggregation SQL. The properties file and default database tables, data, user, group and roles are created for the object server. The SQL customization is also applied. If the object server name ends in underscore B as per the naming convention, the backup object server property is automatically set to true and the corresponding automations required by the backup object server are enabled. Start the object server that is backup object server using the command ncvo object server iphone name at b. The object server is confirmed as initialized and entering into the run state. Configuring the bidirectional aggregation object server gateway. Copy the multi tier property files for the gateway. Note the installation of Tivoli Netcool Omnibus. It is not necessary because the gateway is configured on the same host computer as the backup aggregation object server at B. Now we are going to copy the multi tier property files for the gateway to the default location where the configuration and property files are held. Files are copied that is actdate.map, actdate.props, actdate.table replication definition. Start the gateway 
using the command object server wipe iPhone props file at gate dot props the gateway is configured as initialized and entering into run state now we are going to configure the communication information in the backup object server that is the trigger details, seizure details configuration for failover failback is provided through the multi tier architecture in the extension multi tier if deploying a single primary and a single backup object server with a bidirectional object server failover gateway between them the aggregation layer of the multi tier configuration should be used the multi tier configuration automatically configure automatic failover failback on the backup object server the trigger back, backup counterpart up, backup counterpart down, backup finished and recent finish should be enabled. On the backup object server, the property backup object server must be set to true. On the backup object server, initially the primary only trigger group should be disabled and the property acting primary should be set to false. In the bidirectional object server failover gateway, the few properties must be set. That is, gate dot object server a dot description should be failover underscore gate, and gate dot object server b dot description it should also should be failover gate. On the failover, when primary object server is unavailable, the bidirectional failover gateway will raise the signal counterpart down. In the backup object server, the backup counterpart down trigger fires to enable the primary only trigger group and set the property acting primary to true. On the failback, when the primary object server is available, the bidirectional failover gateway will raise the signal counterpart up in the backup object server. The trigger counterpart up will raise the signal when the bidirectional object server gateway completes the resynchronization from the backup object server to the primary object server. It raises the signal gateway resync finish on the backup object server. The trigger resync finish fires to set the property acting primary to false. Now the failover configuration has been configured successfully. For more detail please log on to www.developer.ibm.com and IBM Knowledge Center. Thank you.